In this video, I'll be talking about Slim from Of Mice and Men and exploring different aspects of his character and giving you some ideas of what you might want to bring up in an exam should a question on his character come up. So first of all, um, he's immediately presented to us like a god. Uh, you may notice Steinbeck gives him so much time and attention. So even Steinbeck as a writer is in awe of him. Um, for example, he says his ear heard more than was said to him and his slow speech had overtones not of thought but of understanding beyond thought. He sounds superhuman. Um, he sounds all-knowing. He's ageless. He's godlike. And so Steinbeck really has elevated Slim to, you might argue, immortal status. His character represents an ideal of what man can be. He can be kind, he can be compassionate, he can be moral, and we'll come back to this idea later. Is Slim's character, you might ask yourself, is, has he been created by Steinbeck to attack the status quo of 1930s America? Because it's not people like Slim who are the most powerful in society. It's people like the boss and Curly. So Steinbeck reveres the cowboy in stark contrast to his negative depiction of the boss and Curly. And so through Slim, Steinbeck, you might argue, promotes his anti-capitalist message. I should mention actually before we continue with this video that what's highlighted in blue is context. If you're doing the Edexcel IGCSE English Literature exam, 50% of your marks is on context. So make sure you are referencing context throughout your essay. Linked to this godlike quality um, is the fact that he's presented as this natural born leader. Look at the language that's used to describe him majesty, royalty, master. These all have connotations of regality um, and it immediately creates this sense of power and authority. Um, look at the way um, those in the ranch view him as well. All talk stopped when he spoke. And they believe that Slim's opinions were law. So they it's a clear sign of respect for him. They hang on to his every word. But what's interesting there, and, and you know, the first two really talk about his leadership, but what's really important is that he's friendly. And that really supports this idea that he's not just a leader, but he's a natural born leader. He's not forcing anything. He's not trying really hard to get people's respect. He just has it. Um, his power seems effortless in contrast to the boss and Curly, as they, as examples, as an example, need to wear high-heeled boots and give other characters hell to assert their dominance. Whereas Slim doesn't have to be mean um, to achieve power. So the contrast between Slim and Curly serves to suggest that the economic power of Curly and his father is artificial, a violation of the natural order in which Slim ought to rank highest. And of course, this is um, the perspective of Steinbeck. So for Steinbeck, Slim represents an idealized American cowboy who is of high moral standing and contrasts with the greed of the capitalists that he believed were destroying agricultural life. And of course, you can link that to um, 1930s Great Depression and also link it to the Dust Bowl. So with all of this, of course, you know, this is a little bit repetitive. He's powerful. Um, but I wanted to put this as a separate idea because it's not just because he's godlike, but there's other reasons why he's powerful. First of all, he's a jerk line skinner. So he gets power from his skill set. Um, he lives in a capitalist world where his worth is determined by how useful you are um, in making profit for someone else. And his skill is very useful for the boss. So he contrasts heavily to the likes of Candy, who is a low skilled worker and is considered disposable. Look at this literal indicator of the hierarchy at the ranch. Carlson stepped back to let Slim precede him. So just seeing the order in which he enters a room and Carlson allowing Slim to go in front of him is just a, 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 a reminder of the hierarchy in that ranch. In, in comparison to all the other workers, he's the most powerful because he's the most skilled. He's the most useful to uh, the boss. But... His, his power also comes, you might argue, from um, his 
his intelligence. Look at after the fight scene between Curly and Lenny and the way um, Slim manages that situation. I think you got your hand caught in a machine. If you don't tell nobody what happened, we ain't going to. So here is blackmailing Curly, but it's because he knows that Curly's reputation is so important to him that he can use use it against him as bargaining power. So he is bright as well. Um, so his power doesn't just derive from his skill set and it's not just God-given. Um, it's also because he's very intelligent. He can read people really well. Um, he's fortunate though, remember, because he's a much more permanent ranch worker. This sets him aside uh, from all the other characters or all the other ranch workers. They are not permanent members of the ranch. He's in an unusual position uh, during the time of the Great Depression when work was scarce and itinerant workers had to move around a lot. Um, they didn't really have steady jobs and they certainly didn't feel very settled um, like Slim does. He's also really pragmatic and this might be the part of Slim that might not sit well to a re uh, with a reader. As an example, he has puppies and he mentions straight away that he drowned four of them right off. So he's clearly not drawn into sem sentimentality. He's much more pragmatic. But that pragmatic mind justifies what seems like violent behaviour because he considers how the mother wouldn't be able to feed that many and he does mention that straight away afterwards that she wouldn't be able to keep all the puppies alive so the fact that he mentions that shows that he's actually ruled by a policy of the greater good so even though it seems violent even though it seems evil it comes from a place of good uh, the, it, the nonchalant way he speaks of his actions is a good reminder of the brutal world in which Slim lives, a world where the weakest are dismissed with little thought. And so you might argue that those puppies that have just been killed off to for the greater good of the upper, other puppies who now will be able to um, be fed properly for, by their mother, it does highlight maybe how the weakest are um, treated in wider society. Candy looked a long time at Slim to try to find some reversal and Slim gave him none. So this is when the conversation comes up as to whether Candy's dog should be shot dead, basically, and put out of his misery because he's a very old dog. Um, Slim's non-response seals the sheepdog's fate. In, it, we've just seen previously that his word is law. And so he really got to decide whether the sheepdog lived or not. And he chose not to say no. And therefore, in some respects, he gave the nod for this sheepdog to be killed. So it suggests he supports the idea of euthanasia, which links later to his support for George killing Lenny. Because of course, he's going to say later, which is linked to the next quote, you had a George, I swear you had her. And that's in reference to George having to kill Lenny. So he objectively considers the alternatives for Lenny. He'll either get brutally murdered by Curly or he's going to get admitted into a mental institution. And we should know that mental institutions in the 1930s treated their patients like animals. They were experiments. Um, they were not seen as human beings. Um, so he's able to make rational decisions to navigate the cruel world in which he lives. And I think it's really important not to misinterpret his actions as cruel, but really to interpret them as pragmatic uh, and really think about the context in which he lives. And he does live in a very cruel, harsh world where sometimes he's not offered um, choices, a good choice. It's more like a, a less evil choice. Um, so you could link this to social Darwinism as well, which gained popularity among the political, medical and economic elite of the United States. And that's really the belief that there's no room for compassion for the likes of Lenny. It's, it's basically um, the strongest people survive. And that's it. Um, he does, however, it's important to mention that he does have compassion for the weakest members of the ranch. So these harsh actions reveal the repercussions of creating such a cruel world. You are left not always with an option to do good, but rather to do less evil. You could link that to George, okay? What option does he really have at the end of, of this novella? To leave Lenny to live so he can be brutally murdered by um, a crowd of hungry, uh, hangry, angry men, sorry, Um or to be um, institutionalized. So, you know, it, it kind of highlights the tough situation that these people um, found themselves in. 
but he's certainly in the novella class as a moral character uh, in the first time we hear of him is actually through candy when he's speaking to lenny and george as they've just arrived in the ranch and he calls him straight away hell of a nice fella um, look at the way he interacts with the weakest members of the ranch he calls curly's wife good looking and now of course we could look at that as a sexist um way to um say hi to curly's wife but try and consider the time in which he's lived he lives in where a woman's looks was considered important and it's clearly important for curly's wife to have some attention that's why she's wearing makeup she's making a lot of um of effort with her appearance and i think he reads her really well and he knows that that will make her feel nice um she's a product of the environment that she lives in remember he um, also says oh hello crooks this contrasts with the way others refer to him with the n-word um he also is the only person other than lenny and um and candy in, in that one chapter to enter crooks's place of home as well um and he also can read lenny really well he says lenny ain't mean he says it a number of times see he he has compassion um for for others um, he also shows compassion in different ways. When the dog is killed, when the old sheep dog is killed, he tells Whit to take a shovel. In other words, you know, don't let Candy see the dog dead. Okay, so he has compassion. He's sensitive. He's described as inviting confidence. That's when George kind of really opens up and tells him everything that happened in the past with Lenny. Um, and at the end come on George me and you will get a drink so he understands that what George just did in killing Lenny was extremely hard and this is going to break him and he offers him friendship so his capacity to to care is important as it reveals that his harsher actions are acts of mercy rather than cruelty deep down he is a good person his kindness provides a contrast to the otherwise hostile environment of the ranch his character gives hope men are capable of being good Steinbeck presents him as thoughtful and sensitive to challenge the stereotype of a ranch worker who is kind of known to be rough and mean um, as the novella's moral centre we look to him to help determine the morality of George's actions as well. So he's really important in us understanding why George killed Lenny. We don't see it as an act of cruelty. We see it as an act of mercy. And of course, whenever you're writing an essay about a character, you should always think about the overall message. What's the overall intention? Why did Steinbeck create this character? Here are some ideas, but of course, think of your own as well and feel free to share them in the comments section. Is it to promote his anti-capitalist beliefs? Does Slim help highlight how awful Boss and Curly, Curly are? Um, because he's so nice in contrast to how mean they are. Um, does it does he help emphasize the cruelty of others and society again through his kindness and through his compassion is he promoting his own ideal of what a man should be he kind of looks up to this kind of traditional cowboy and wants to go back to the old traditional ways um is he important as well to eradicate george's guilt just like the ranch workers look towards slim for guidance we start as the reader to look towards slim for guidance and the fact that he says repeatedly you had her makes us feel better about what george did as well and helps us justify in our minds why george had to kill lenny of course these are just a few ideas one thing i didn't cover uh, was how comfortable he seems to be with his loneliness he seems to be the only one that doesn't really struggle in that sense that's something that you could explore as well but feel free to share your own ideas in the comments section